Welcome back. Two years ago, we started saving our own cucumber seeds to start a land race variety. We took a bunch of different varieties of pickling cucumber and we crossed them up. This year, we added a few more varieties and we crossed them up. And now we have cucumbers that are ready to be saved for seed. One of the side effects of this is that we got 163 pounds of cucumbers so far. And I made some pickles that were incredibly mushy because I cooked them too long when I canned them. So they were kind of like uh, dill flavored goo. This is why I don't do cooking videos on this channel. Uh, I usually leave that to my wife to, to do, but I, I decided to make pickles and it's a good thing I didn't film it because that just would have been dumb. This is how you don't make pickles. But anyhow, we got a lot of fresh eating cucumbers. We got some good relish out of it. And my wife made some live fermented pickles that are gonna be totally fine. But my pickles were a failure. So, I'm David the Good. I'm a gardener. I'm not a chef. This is what you wanna look for when you are saving cucumber seeds. You let them blow up into blimps. They're rather like melons. They're in the same family as watermelons, the greater cucurbitaceae family. And when they get like this, great big melony cucumbers, they are ready to go. So you look for bright yellow or orange or just about rotten or even rotten, that's fine. These guys, I'll pick and I'll let them sit for a little while longer. And then you open them up and the seeds inside are ready. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna open one up for you so you can see what I'm talking about. So if you were to cut open a regular green cucumber from the grocery store, those are immature. They uh, waste all their money, they tell rude jokes. They are incredibly immature and they don't have seeds inside of them that are viable. You pick cucumbers when they are underripe, rather like you pick summer squash. But when they're ripe, like this, you see the seeds now have hard coats on them. These guys here, in order to save them, all you do is you take them inside, you rinse them off really good in a colander to get the gel off of the outside. You just kind of scrub them a little bit and then lay them out on paper towels or however you want to do it to dry. Let them dry up and then you can save them. And you can see inside of this cucumber that there are tons and tons of seeds. So if you save one cucumber, you have more than enough seeds to make tons and tons and tons of dill pickle slop and get lots and lots of fresh. When you think about a packet of seeds being about $2, there's probably about four packets of seeds inside of one of these. They just keep going and going and going. Tons and tons of seeds in there. So there's there's hundreds of seeds. So compared to going to the seed rack and buying buying one, you know, that's a, that's a really good return. And if you're to look on websites about seed saving, it'll say, you know, don't let your varieties cross. Give them, you know, 500 feet of space or, or a half a mile. Some of them, you know, it's a half a mile isolation. Make sure you get an heirloom variety and you go ahead and keep that thing so the bees won't cross it because they're pollinated, etc. We're throwing all of that out. This is land race gardening, Joseph Lofthouse style, which tied in really well to my own style of gardening, which is rather anarchistic. So the reason that we did it like this is to get all of those genetics of commercial varieties, let them cross up, you know, the various heirlooms and, and types, you know, Boston pickling and whatever, super pickle and dwarf pickle and blah, 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 blah. All those, all those fun names that were bred for specific regions, often in climates that are far away from our own. So by mixing all those genetics up again and throwing them at our backyard and letting them all cross, we are getting varieties that survive well in our lower Alabama 8B backyard. So this variety should be really great for the deep south, particularly as we continue a few years along and just keep saving seeds. So you throw all the genetics together, together and you let them all mix up. They all started with good varieties. We're probably not gonna get anything that's too off 
they're already sweet you know they're not like bitter wild types of cucumbers they're all good pickling types not to say that we can make pickles but they're good pickling types and they're good for fresh eating too i do know how to make pickles it's just i was trying to I was trying to can them and I wanted to, you know, follow the food safety regulations and that makes mush. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not proud of it, but I, I just want to, I just feel like I need to confess that, get that off my chest that I made a bunch of mush. And, uh, and so those are getting turned into bacon. So if we go and we harvest all these guys when they're like this, bring them in, save the seeds, we end up with jars, jars of seeds because each one of these you know that's probably gonna take a little half pint jar or something and fill it about that full with each cucumber and so we'll put them all in a great big jar and shake them all up and mix all those genetics and hopefully you know nature and our environment are sorting them out and some of the seeds we'll share some of the seeds will probably my uh, daughter will sell in her Etsy store as our mixed up land race variety but after saving some seeds and adding more varieties to it, we've got a variety that's more adapted to our style of gardening, hopefully, between both the genetics and the epigenetics. So having been grown here, it kind of, there's some potential memory that these seeds have. When they grow the next season, we get something that is more adapted to my style of using the cucumbers as ground cover. I don't bother putting them up on trellises which is actually a good thing because we had hurricane force winds the other day and it didn't damage the cucumbers but it blew over some of my yam trellises smashed corn all sideways and laid it out on the ground and just blew things all over the place but because these are growing as a ground cover here rather than being up they didn't get torn off the vines and thrown all over the place so There'll be a variety that's used to growing more like melons on the ground and working as a ground cover in the grocery row gardens like we're doing with our watermelons. And they, they should just adapt to this area. That's the idea. And if you wanna learn more about that, you should check out Joseph Lofthouse's book, Land Race Gardening, because it's really useful. Um, and, and you can kind of throw out those rules on seed saving. Just plant a whole bunch of stuff together that's similar. Let it all cross. Whichever ones live well in your backyard, uh, those you're saving. So the first few years you're basically saving for survival. The ones that grow up and are resistant to the wilt and resistant to the bugs and survive everything and grow in your yard and give you a good yield you save seeds from. And then in the next few seasons, over time, if you find things that you really like out of them, so one of them maybe makes a lot more cucumbers or it's sweeter or you get one that doesn't taste good or something like that, you just rogue those plants out. You don't save the first few cucumbers. You go around and you taste test them and if they taste good, you say, okay, I'm gonna save some from this one. So then in the next season, you're kind of selecting for that thing. So you want some that are really long or ones that are skinny or ones that are really short or whatever else, or more bush type or more vigorous. You just select for those things in future years. So you breed for survival first by throwing a whole bunch of genetics at your backyard. And then after that, you select the ones that work well. And we will get tons and tons and tons of seeds. We will never have to buy cucumber seeds ever again because even one cucumber like i said i could plant the entire grocery row garden and i could plant an acre probably with one cucumber and uh, that's serious abundance and once you stop worrying about do i have to separate it by a half a mile ah eh, forget it i'm not going to do that i'm just going to go buy it off the seed rack at home depot once you stop worrying about that you realize ah seed saving is not it's not genius stuff People have done it for thousands of years before everything got commercialized and we were sold very specific varieties. There were a lot of backyard varieties, which often later became our heirlooms. You wonder where those wonderful heirlooms came from? Mostly it was gardeners just like you, saving their seeds and picking out things that they liked. And then later, those get enshrined as, ah, oh, that's the heirloom such and such. But that heirloom such and such was probably not grown in your climate. So we are creating our own heirlooms over time by just mixing a bunch of stuff and saving the seeds and growing it and it's super simple just pick them when they're all the way ripe clean the seeds out dry them out put them in a little jar 
with a, with a silica gel packet. If you have it, put it in your refrigerator, plant it next year. And hey, you're getting your own land race cucumbers. It's hard to beat that, and it's way more simple. Plus, it's, it's just really fun because you don't know exactly what you're going to get. And you just know you're going to get cucumbers. And with the watermelons, it's been crazy. We've got all kinds of different varieties of watermelons. These all pretty much look like pickling cucumbers, but there's a little bit of variation, and hopefully the variations that uh, do excellently in our climate are going to be the ones that we're saving seeds from. And it sure looks like that so far. The ones that didn't grow don't, you know, they don't get their seeds saved. So throw a bunch of genetics at the ground, whatever sticks, that's our land race. Thanks for joining me. Um, you can get the Compost Your Enemies t-shirts. Uh, they're made in Alabama by a family business, and I'll put a link to that below. And um, th I sponsor my own videos. That's why you don't see sponsors. Um, this video is sponsored by the Compost Your Enemies t-shirt made by Aardvark Screen Printing. <laughs> so, Compost Your Enemies. And uh, if you're interested in the grocery row garden system that we have here, I'll put the grocery row gardening book as a link below. And then finally, you've got to get Joseph Lofthouse's book, Land Race Gardening, which will explain this idea of throwing genetics at your backyard. Very exciting. And it's uh, the enthusiasm is just catching, and I think you'll love it. Ties in really well to our style of gardening, and uh, yeah, he's a kindred spirit. You'll, you'll enjoy it. Thanks for joining me, and until next time, may your thumbs always be green. Discover the beauty and efficiency behind Grocery Row Gardening. Create a backyard where fruits, herbs, vegetables, and flowers all grow together within proper spacing. In Grocery Row Gardening, you'll find the tools and systems you need to keep your family fed.